I showed you guys how to use iMovie. And I showed you how to use QuickTime to record the screen with your voice on top. And I showed you how to use QuickTime to use the camera built into the computer to record you. And of course, all of you have Android phones, iPhones, some of you have iPads, various other tablets that all have a camera. And some of you might even have a real digital video camera or digital SLR. So there's many ways that you can create your own video clips that you're going to put in your own video work. What about other things that go in videos? We can also use photos, we can use music, we can use videos made by other people, but when we're using something made by other people, we have to be really, really careful that we have the permission to do this. Everybody is aware that you do research by reading books and you find information from books and then you put that information into your own essays, your own reports. Everybody's aware that that's what we do. We read something and we put the ideas, the data in a paper. But we also have to reference that paper. Because if I copy something from this book, I copy it and I paste this into my essay, I'm telling the world that this sentence, this paragraph, this thing that I've copied, I'm telling the world, this is mine. But I didn't write it. I would be stealing. So what we do in an essay is here is our writing here. And then when we get to the part which is not our writing, we put in the quotation marks. We end the quotation marks and then we have the reference details in brackets. This is fairly standard academic referencing to tell people this part is not my writing. It's to tell people that yes, it's in my essay, but I copied it from this book or this report. That's very normal, very standard writing referencing to make sure you are not committing plagiarism. Everybody's aware of this. What people are not so aware of is when we're making a presentation. So for example, here's my Google Drive. I could click New, go to Google Slides, and I start to make a presentation. Or I could be opening up Apple's Keynote, which is a really, really, really good software. And if you're a Windows user, you could be using PowerPoint. But any of these essays, any of these um, presentations, they're just like essays, except you probably put multimedia materials into your presentation. Your presentation slideshows might have photos, they might have videos, they might have a piece of music, and we need to reference them just the same way we would reference taking text from a book. But using multimedia there's something else that we need to consider. Yes, if you read any book, you can copy something from that book, put it in your own writing, as long as you use the inverted commas. When it comes to multimedia materials, photos, videos, audio tracks, designs, you can only put them in your own videos, you can only put them in your own slideshow if A, you reference them, and B, the person who made those multimedia materials is telling you, yes, you can actually use my photo, my video, my music, my designs. So how do you know if you can or cannot use the clips? Put in CC search, if everybody can do CC search, wait up. And if your browser is set to search in English, the very first result will be the one that we're looking for, CC Search. And if we click on this, this takes us to the search page for Creative Commons. So everybody should be able to get to this page. It's called CC Search. Okay, I can see most of you have got that open. Okay, now what I'm going to do here, let me just do a sample search. If everyone can just watch what I'm doing. I put in Japan because maybe I want some Japan stuff. Now, do I want images with Japan in the title? Do I want music? Do I want videos? I can choose what it is that I'm looking for. So let's start with photos. 
I have a couple of options. I could search Google Images. I could search Flickr. I could search Wikimedia Commons. So let's start with Flickr. I clicked Flickr, and Japan, as a keyword, has been used to search Flickr. And how many people know what Flickr is? Flickr is Yahoo's online photo storage. It has a huge amount of free space for photographers to store images online. And um, Google's one, oh, it's just crashed. Oh, my screen's just crashed. Google's one is called Picasa. And uh, Yahoo have got, I, uh, Apple have got iCloud. So there are a number of different services. But Creative Commons actually works with Flickr. Oh, my screen has just died on me. Come on, come on. Old technology. It's a very old TV. It has really old wires and cables. Now, uh, let's see if this is going to restart. Yes. Okay. Cancelled. Okay, hey, we're back in business. So, um, I've done a search on Flickr. I've chosen this image. Looks really nice. Maybe this is a photo I want to use. Can I use this photo? Well, I can have a look down here. And I can see, oh, that looks familiar. That's one of the Creative Commons licenses. So let's see the details. Some rights reserved. And it tells me that this photo... I can share it, I can adapt it, I can do everything with it I want. Great, I can use it. And what are the conditions as long as I attribute it, as long as I tell people in a paper base who wrote the book. As long as I tell people who took the photo, I can use it. So let's go back to see who wrote the photo who took the photo. So it's by Moyan Bren. This is the guy's name. And I could click this and this will take me to his photo stream on Flickr. This is his page on Flickr with all his details. So we know the guy's name. Here, we also know the date. It was taken on November 19th, 2010. And if we click the X of data here, we can see what image width, the size, the samples per pixel, what he used Photoshop CS6. We can find out so much details about the photo here if we need to. But for this purpose, all we need to do is give the guy's name and put in a link to this URL and tell people what kind of license, Creative Commons attribution only, and we can use that photo. No problem. Now let's go back and find out how downloading it then. Here's the download button. If we click this, it offers us a range of sizes. What size of photo? Do we want a square one? Do we want the original? Do we want big? Do we want medium? And we can download and use the photo. Let's go back and choose another one. Uh, let's go here, Japan Flickr. Uh, maybe, let's find one that isn't Moyan Bren. Okay, how about this one? Really nice photo, nice cloud pattern and so on. Can we use it? Yes. Some rights reserved. Let's have a look and see. We can share it, we can mix it, we can do everything, but we have to attribute it. We have to tell people who the photographer was, the URL and the license. And if we change it, the new one that we make where we have remixed his photo, basically on the new one, we have to allow other people to change ours. These are the only two conditions. We can use the photo. Same thing again. Let's go back here. Here's the sizes that are on offer. And we know the date, August 5th. We know the photographer, Vincent AF. And we can probably come down here. It's got the EXIF data. Does it have it on this one? Okay, this one doesn't have the EXIF data. Some do, some don't. But that's not important for our purposes. We just need to know the guy's name, Vincent AF. Let's open this and have a look. Vincent AF, that's the name that he's using online. And this is his photo stream. Here is the URL for this particular photo. Oh, that's Moyan, sorry, let's close that down. Uh, here's the URL for that particular photo. So we would put this URL 
put the guy's name and we would say what kind of license and we can use those photos and it's exactly the same if we don't search Flickr if we choose to search for Japan photos on Google Images for example we can go to Google Images and here Google has four levels of license whereas Creative Commons has six but again it's automatically with Creative Commons starting the search it automatically preloads Google Image as labeled for reuse with modification this means we can use it now Google Images gives us some other data we can choose which size of photo we want 800 by 600 is a good basic size we can choose what color maybe we only want photos with blue we can choose the type Maybe we only want photos that have faces. Or maybe we want line drawings. Nothing there. Okay, maybe we want clip art. Maybe we want photos with no faces. I don't know why that one came up. Um, time. Maybe we want new photos that were only uploaded a day ago or a week ago or whatever. So we can find it. So here's a photo here. Maybe we like this. Let's visit the page. And here we can see permission it's a US government photo so US government photos when they've finished with the photo they obviously become public domain this is what PD means public domain it means anybody can use these photos because the government has said hey this is our photo we've finished with it it's open to everybody it's public domain so here we go here the image or file is in the public domain so all we would need to say is public domain image. The source is David W. Menard from 1993. And clicking on this image, we would copy this URL as the link to the photo. And that's what we need to do. Similarly, we could choose a different photo. Well, here's one here. Uh, visit the page. Now this one here, we can see there's the Creative Commons license again. It's a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 license. The author, the photographer, is George Seagun, and this is his online persona. That's his user data for Wikimedia. And if we click on the photo, here is the actual URL for that photo that we could use. And this is the URL here. Now, how do we reference this in a slideshow or in a movie? Well, here, this is a set of slides that I used when I was giving a conference presentation last year. I was at the Learning 2.0 conference in Bangkok, and I was giving a presentation, and these are some of the slides that I used. This was my title slide. Here's a photo of an owl. This was my slide number two, just as text. This is number three, here's a photo. Here was number four, there's another photo. Number five was another photo. Number six was another photo. Here's another photo. And at the end, at the end of an essay, you have a works cited page where you have the author's name and the title, the author's name and the title, the author's name and the title. Well, at the end of a slideshow, at the end of a movie, you should have a digital reference slide which is like this here's a small version of the photo here's the copyright the photographer's name the url here's